welcome back to another episode. Today's episode, we're going to talk about key factors to look for in a home service franchise. Many of our candidates that come in are looking to buy a business. A lot of them like the idea of home services coming from a real estate background. They like the fact that there's low overhead. A lot of times they don't need a brick and mortar location. If, if they do, it might be just warehouse space. Generally, lower startup costs than most brick and mortar retail type of franchise models. So uh, we're going to get into some of the things to look for in a home service franchise that I see my candidates looking for, and I think this will be relevant for you. The first thing is recurring revenue streams. Does this business model have recurring revenue streams? Pest control companies, businesses like that, even pest waste management where you're going out weekly, monthly to facilitate the service. Re recurring revenue is, is, is a good component that a lot of Candidates look for because they want that consistency that they can pro forma or project revenue, how many customers we need, so so forth. So uh, rec recurring revenue models for sure. Also, uh, is there a, a contract? Is it 12 months, 24, 36 months for the business model? Are these long contracts? Are there national accounts? Does the franchisor, do they provide options to get national accounts um, for, bi for big customers nationwide. And what does that look like as a percentage within the business? So national accounts, recurring revenue, those are things to, to look for. Additionally, when we kind of dive into what about the franchise itself? Well, how many units do they have? Are they an emerging franchise? It's not a bad thing to look for an, uh, to get involved with an emerging franchise where they might only have 10, 15 units versus a more established franchise with two, three, or 400 units because there's territory wide open. They don't have a, as big of a track record. Sometimes the FTD or the franchise disclosure document, their item 19 is not going to be very complete. When you're investing in a, an emerging franchise, you're really investing in the, the business model and the founders or the, the management team, the leadership team of that brand. So what have they done in the past? What's their vision for the, for the company? And also, I think what what's really important too is is finding a culture culture fit within a business model. Make sure you mesh well with the team, with the leadership team, the management team, because I think that will help provide kind of long term vision. Because you're gonna, even though it's your own business, you're working within a system, in a franchise system. You need to love uh, love the team, like the people around you, uh, and you want to definitely make sure it's a culture fit for you. As soon as you make your initial phone call with the franchisor, typically they're going to send you the franchise disclosure document, and that's going to be anywhere from two to 400 pages. And then that's where we talk about the item seven, which is the investment range. Then there's the item 19, which is the financial claims that are stated within the document. The FTD, Federal Trade Commission basically oversees this. So there's kind of a process and a format of these franchise disclosure documents to systematize them that everybody has to follow this recipe when they're providing uh, disclosure. Now, sometimes if it's an emerging franchise brand, their item 19 is going to be, it might not be in there or it might be very kind of, maybe they're only showing numbers from a flagship or a corporate or an affiliate location, which means they're basically, their team is running it or owns that particular corporate location. So you have also have to see, you know, is that one territory? Is it two territories? You're, you're comparing all these things at once. But going back to home service franchise models, what people are looking for, I think um, large sectors, restoration, pest control, the home service industry in general. I like personally, I like home maintenance. We work with a brand, for example, and they do like an 18 point clean the gutters, window cleaning, changing filters, water softeners, like smoke detectors, air filters, all the eight, you know, most common things. And so they have uh, a partnership with a large property management company. I like that business model because you can get in with property management companies and they could have three, four, 500, 800 doors. And now all of a sudden you're servicing those doors. So there's lots of opportunity. Obviously there's painting companies, fencing companies, roofing companies. Uh, there's lots of opportunity, plumbing, HVAC, uh, and so forth. And, and so the nice thing about the franchise world is you, you like you don't need to have an experience in HVAC to be successful in that business. There's a lot of entrepreneurs that get in there and get the playbook and can be extremely successful. One of the brands we work with, for example, the last 30 
units they placed, 27, 27 of them were entrepreneurs, had no uh, HVAC experience or, or whatever. So I know that would be a concern for many of us going into like, well, I, I know nothing about HVAC. I know nothing about plumbing. A good system should take you and, and be able to, as long as you can follow the system and you're a, a good fit, you should be able to run this business. The, the other thing too is, is really when you're looking for a franchise system, and maybe it's not home service. There's lots of other industries and sectors. What we do at our firm is we, when a candidate comes into our ecosystem, we have them take a business assessment and then we spend time doing intake. And that's where we're really able to craft a thesis on what business model would be best suited for you and your, based on your financial capability, lifestyle, skill sets, and so forth. So the business assessment is usually uh, right after our initial phone call, it takes about 10 minutes. And then we you know, obviously where you reside, what brands are located. But typically we recommend you look at anywhere from seven to 10 different brands and it's at least speak to three different brands in the beginning just to really understand all the different marketing components. It's definitely a process to get to the finish line. Um, I always tell candidates the same thing. Look, go through our process. It's not going to cost you any money to work with us. Just be committed to the process. And at the end of it, you might decide, hey, maybe a business acquisition is better suited for me. We also work with resale. So we do franchises. Anything franchise, we help you with. Franchise startups, franchise resales. And a big component, too, is your goals. Are you keeping your corporate job and you want something semi-absentee? There's a lot of different business models. It's really kind of navigating and understanding where that fit's going to come in. And sometimes it's a business that you least expect. And that's our job is to kind of put some outliers out there for you saying, look, I, you know, based on what you told me, you didn't pick this sector, or this industry, but I think this might be a good fit for you. And here's why. So that's the main goal. So anyways, go to bookwithbo.com. If you'd like to schedule calls and talk about SBA financing or how to find your ideal business, we have a team who can help you find the right franchise, whether a startup or resale, we can help you identify the best way to fund it with high leverage SBA financing. So just find us at bookwithbo.com. Thanks so much. Meet Bo Eckstein, the driving force behind Business Ownership Coach, unlocking the path to business ownership. Visit www.businessownershipcoach.com. Thrive with Business Ownership Coach. Hey guys, Bo Exine here. If you enjoyed what you saw, please subscribe to this channel. We talk all things financing. I've been in the lending industry for over 20 years, and I'm happy to answer your questions and provide great content.